Hello, this is Dr. Walters with a brief overview vodcast on Durkheim and the Durkheimian tradition. Durkheim is among the most important of the classical sociological theorists, writing in France at the end of the 19th and beginning of the early 20th century. Writes Randall Collins about the Durkheimian tradition, we now come to the core tradition of sociology, a tradition of genuine excitement. Like the conflict tradition, that would be Karl Marx, there is a surface and an underlying reality beneath. But this time the surface is symbol and ritual, the depths are non-rational and subconscious. The intellectual tradition focuses on the theme of emotional forces, morality, the sacred, the religious, and declares that these are the essence of everything social. The Durkheimians take us into the jungle, only the jungle is ourselves, and we never escape from it. The tom-toms are beating, the vines entangling around us, emotional tides are sweeping us along, and this is no more than the magic show we call life. Luzé Kozer notes the deep sense of integrity, commitment, and character that was embodied in Durkheim's sociological theories. Durkheim was a man of character, like the men described by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who are the conscience of the society to which they belong. In contrast to those who consider life as it is reflected in opinions, events, and circumstances, Durkheim attempted to mold events in order to put his cherished principles into practice. Throughout his life, Durkheim was passionately engaged in the moral issues of his time. He saw it as his life task to contribute to the moral regeneration of the French nation to which he was so deeply attached. Durkheim lived between 1858 and 1917. This was a time of great change in France, something addressed in the chapter by Louis A. Coser, but also addressed briefly here. His most important works were The Division of Labor and Society, The Rules of the Sociological Method, Suicide, and Elementary Forms of Religious Life. His key ideas social facts, the division of labor, mechanical and organic solidarity, repressive and restitutive law, suicide types and social facts, explaining these through levels of integration and regulation, elementary forms of religious life and the sacred and the profane, collective effervescence, and the idea of the totem. Perhaps the most important of Durkheim's contribution was his recognition of sociology as an entirely different level of phenomena, meriting its own discipline, its own methods, and its own way of examining a reality that existed in and of itself. This was linked to the emergence of sociology as a discipline something with which Durkheim struggled throughout his life. For Durkheim, social phenomena exist sui genre, that is, as phenomena in and of themselves. They are external, enduring, and impose restraints. They're internalized, but they continue to exist independently. Here, Durkheim is attempting to establish a level of reality that goes beyond biology and psychology and exists in and of itself, meriting its own discipline. Another of the most important of Durkheim's common con uh, concepts was the division of labor, also noted in an entirely different way in the work of Karl Marx. Durkheim, living as he did during the period of modernization and urbanization and industrialization, 
Taylorism, if you will, noted that the division of labor was not something confined to the factory or to the economic sphere. Political, judicial, and administrative functions were also becoming more specialized. In the division of labor, one of his books, Durkheim compared society to an organism or to the body. That is, he used the organism or the body as a metaphor for society. So just as the society, just as the body has different parts, arms, heart, leg, eyes, with different structures, structures and different functions, likewise, the society has different structures with different functions. The distinction between mechanical and organic solidarity may or may not result from Durkheim's close read and study of the work of Toynes and his understanding of Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. Nonetheless, these, these terms characterize the society in transition from an earlier to a later form, that is, from a pre-modern to a modern form. Mechanical solidarity is characteristic of the village, that is, of a pre-industrial tribal society where solidarity, a sense of belonging, is based on similarities or likeness. Mechanical solidarity is characterized by a rigidity of deeply felt beliefs, typically religious and repressive laws. In a society or village characterized by mechanical solidarity, what happens to one person in the village happens to everyone. Organic solidarity is much more modern and much more characteristic of societies, industrial societies or urban societies following the Industrial Revolution. These societies are characterized by a division of labor with functional interdependence, a complementarity among roles, and weaker, much more flexible belief systems. Here, society is characterized by restitutive laws, that is, an effort to bring the victim of crime back to a state of where he was or she was prior to the commission of the crime. Among Durkheim's most important and most complex concepts are those that are reflected in his work on suicide. Once again here, Durkheim refers to suicide rates, that is, a phenomena at the social level or sociological level, social facts, rather than individual etiologies. For Durkheim, suicide rates were impacted by two key variables, the level of social integration and the level of social regulation. When groups break down and the individual loses his or her sense of belonging, suicide or the type of suicide would be egoistic. So when the, when the fabric of the society and its integrative function breaks down, suicide rates peak as a consequence of egoistic suicides. Likewise, when integration is too high, suicide rates peak as a consequence of altruistic suicide. This would be like the kamikaze fighters. Regulation is a second feature, again, social fact or variable at the sociological level. When regulation is too high, such as in prisons, suicide rates may be higher as a consequence of what he calls fatalistic suicide. When the normative structure of the society breaks down, this results 
in a peak of what Durkheim would call a nomic suicide, or a society characterized by enomi. Nearly all of the early sociological theorists dealt with religion and the functions of religion and social life. For Durkheim, the world was divided into the sacred and the profane. And these are characteristics that are part of the ongoing social reality. Note that France at the time was largely embedded in a framework derived from the Judeo-Christian tradition, one in which the sacred and the profane were typically separated. Thus, purification rituals upon entering Catholic churches or the separation of food in the Jewish tradition. Religious beliefs for Durkheim are collective representations. That is, they express the dependent relationship between the individual and the society, and it's this relationship that has the most impact on what individuals typically think of as religion. What is venerated, according to Durkheim, is called God, but it is really society, and that society is governed by a totem or totemic principle. Durkheim derives this from earlier forms of or elementary forms of religious life, but a totem is an object or thing, and it is often mistaken as itself the object of the of worship. What Durkheim notes and what is so important is that it's not the object itself, but rather what the totem represents. The totem for Durkheim represents, or the god of the clan, represents the clan itself and its own hierarchical principles. The god of the clan, the totemic principle, can therefore be nothing other than the clan itself, personified and represented to the imagination under the visible form of the animal or vegetable that serves the totem. The soul is a symbolic representation of the relationship between the individual and the society. Durkheim, born into a Jewish community as part of his journey into sociological thinking and sociological theory, became as part of this an atheist and thus saw religion in the fashion just described. But Durkheim saw the functional aspects of religious belief. And here we go back to the beginning of this lecture in which we think of society or think of the human body as a metaphor for society with different structures and different functions. In this sense, religion had four key functions for the society. Disciplinary and preparatory, a cohesive function, that is the ceremonial rituals perform a cohesive function that brings people together, a revitalizing function that makes people aware of their common bonds, and the euphoric function which establishes a sense of well-being. Later theorists such as Randall Collins describe this, especially the ritual aspects and the cohesive or the good feelings that come from ritual interaction as collective effervescence. This is just a thumbnail of Durkheim and Durkheim's work. Uh, I look forward to uh, reading your comments as we become more absorbed in Durkheim. Again, Durkheim is one theorist that you might consider for your final paper.